New York City. What's good? This is the Leaders Create Leaders podcast. Your blueprint on how to build a brand, lead a movement, and create a profitable, impact-driven business. On this podcast, we'll dive into my personal stories building two eight-figure businesses and my evolution turning heart-led leaders into conscious millionaires. I'm your host, Gerard Adams. Let's go. And we're back with another episode of Leaders Create Leaders. I'm your host, Gerard GZ Adams, and I wanted to just uh, get on here because I am feeling so refreshed. I was listening to some Dr. Eric Thomas, E.T., the hip-hop preacher this morning. It was so amazing to just kind of get amped up. I feel super refreshed because uh, I did a social media detox to kick off the year. I didn't announce it. It just naturally felt aligned. And so I just did not post and just did not leverage social media the first week of the year. And it just, it felt so good. So today's the second week of the year now that I'm coming back. And I felt really inspired to create this podcast because the word that I really wanted to focus on, the essence that I really wanted to focus on for this podcast is focus. Because I feel focused AF. Like I feel more focused than ever before. And I think it's something that is so important when we think about accomplishing our dreams, our goals. And I know a lot of you are feeling this right now where your time, your energy is the most valuable resource that you have, and you all are playing a big game. And so I wanted to just review with you on this podcast, some things that I've been working on with my coach, with just my own practices, journaling and going within, especially removing myself from technology and social media specifically over the last week. And what came through for me to just give you guys some insights, some tools on how you can activate more focus and concentration in your life so that you can manage your time and energy more effectively this year so that you can accomplish more of your goals, so that you can have more quantum growth in your life, in your business. And so I just wanted to dive into that. And so the first aspect that I have realized is is so important for me when I think about focus is the ability to learn how to say no, because I know that that is something that I've struggled with personally over you know, 2021 and, and oh, just over the years, you know, I just genuinely care to have people in my life feel seen, to feel heard, to feel valued. And I just realized, I don't know if you've ever felt this way, but I just felt like my attention was getting spread out everywhere. And this inner people pleaser in me in the past would always just want to please everyone. And it really created a sense of overwhelm, a a sense of sometimes even anxiety or fatigue, because I was having my energy go to so many projects, so many people, so many things. And so what I realized is that cultivating your no is one of the most important traits that you can build as a leader, as a conscious leader. And honestly, when you start to learn how to say no effectively, right? And not look at it as that you are going to disappoint anyone or that someone is going to look at you a certain type of way as like selfish or whatever. You actually realize that the people that are really your people, they will admire the fact that you are able to say no effectively and that you are really truly honoring what is in your highest alignment. And so in order for you to start saying no more, you have to realize that And this goes with throughout the entire episode, right? It's about the process because a lot of the times we in life, when we get clear, especially in a new year, like when you're so focused on like, what are my big goals for the year? And if you haven't done that yet, I highly recommend doing that, right? And just getting clear, like what are these big goals that you have for your health, you know, for your finances and for your business, for your family, for your friendships and just all these different areas of your life. But as we get so focused on these goals, a lot of times we're looking at the outcome. And the truth is that you should be looking at what is the process for that goal. And so the process of how to say no, so that you can activate even more time and energy towards the things that matter to you in this season, in this chapter of your life is really important. And so the first thing that I highly recommend that you do, take out a piece of paper and pen, or when you get home, make this a priority for the next time that you're able to create space and journal. And I want you to reevaluate your values. 
And I know that this is just something that we all do as leaders and as entrepreneurs, but I really have found reevaluating my values each year as such a powerful tool because the truth is, is that you're not the same person as you were a year ago. And so the things that are important to you have shifted. Your priorities have shifted. I mean, for me, I'm becoming a father, right? Like my daughter could be born like at any moment. <laughs> Like, I'm so stoked. Like, my daughter can be here any moment. Ashley is officially in that zone right now where she could be born. If she was born early, she could be born, you know, three weeks early, two weeks early. And so her due date is actually in the mid-February, but it could happen any day now. And so just the version of me last year versus the version of me this year has shifted. And so with that, my values have shifted. And so I want you to think about what are those values for you right now that are super present and that are super important to you. And I recommend choosing at least five and try to stick to five. A lot of times I've done this and I've gone to like seven. I've tried, sometimes I've even gone past seven. And like it's too much, like pick a solid five that you can really remember. And I want you to write them down and I want you to put them where you can see them. You know, during Q1, especially like just keep them near your desk, keep them where you next to where you go to sleep, keep them in the bathroom, you know, like when you get out of the shower and you just like see them on a post-it, like I want you to really, really sit with those values, describe those values, define those values, because at the end of the day, it's about embodying those values and being clear as to what those values truly are at the core. So that when you go to make decisions and someone reaches out to you about the next opportunity, the next golden opportunity, that's this next shiny object, you can really just sit with and say to yourself beyond just the financial gain or the potential, like, does this really align to my values or does this person really align to these values? Right. And so that's a huge tool. The next tools that I use other than my values, my values is a huge one is the vision. And so if you had not yet, like really describe what the vision is for you this year. And so just the more polarizing, the better, but just really writing out what is that vision of what you're generating, what you're committed to creating in 2022. And so that way you can really understand that some of the greatest leaders in history that have become the most successful and the ones that I've interviewed, the billionaires, right? They weren't doing crazy amount of different projects. Like they were really focused on being great and on one vision. And that vision can be huge. That vision can incorporate a lot of different things, but it was all under one vision, one mission. And so like really write out what is that vision that you have for this year that's going to align to your like 10 year legacy plan. And so whenever these opportunities and people come to you, like, does this align to that vision? And then the next two tools are your calendar and, and an assistant. Like this is a game changer. Like you got to leverage your calendar. It you know, really takes some time to audit your calendar and just rethink how you're managing your time on that calendar. And that's something that I've done and that I'm experimenting with now where it's like, there's only a specific day that I want to be taking calls with clients. There's only a specific day that I want to be taking meetings and doing research for inv for investments and um, with my business partners. There's a certain day that I do these podcasts, that I create content. Like I'm being very specific on when I'm going to shoot content. There's a specific day where I literally just want to be writing my book and I want to be doing research around ancestral leadership. And I want to be going deeper into understanding my methodologies and philosophies and studying history and just going deeper into my mastery so that I can bring more value to my clients and into my containers. And so each one of these things I get to schedule in my calendar. And then I even leave space for connection with friends, space for what I'm creating in my family and my love partner, my, my, my Ashley, my, my love partner. And so like, use your calendar. How are you reorganizing how you're spending your time when you're spending your time? And then last but not least, an assistant. Like if you don't have an assistant right now, whoo, and trying to do it all on your own, I'm telling you one of the greatest decisions I ever made was to just get a personal executive assistant. And this, this person doesn't, it used to be someone who works with me in person. Now I have a virtual assistant and they're phenomenal. They understand all the different softwares. They are just professional, respectful, timely, reliable. 
And uh, it's just been a game changer for me, managing my emails, reminding me every morning, they send me a list of all of the different things that are in my calendar for the day. They schedule everything for me. They are reaching out to people for scheduling and they're just doing the things that allows me to just spend most of my time on high level priorities and not be so bogged down in in all the scheduling and planning because that's not my zone of genius. And so I highly recommend if you don't have one, go to virtualassistance.io virtualassistance.io. And it's the best company to be able to set you up to win with VAs, one for you personally, but even beyond that within your business. So those are the tools. So again, learning to cultivate your no, and then building a process for that no. And so getting clear on your values for this year, getting clear on your vision for this year, getting clear on who is supporting you in that role of helping you to schedule things like an assistant and getting clear on your calendar, like really making sure that you understand when you are planning time for each of one of the aspects of your of, of what you get to do for your business and for your life. So the next that I wanted to talk about in regards to focus is like getting into understanding what your zone of genius is. I feel like this year, I want every one of you to understand what your genius is. Because if you're anything like me, you've tried to do it all. A jack of all trades, or maybe you're a solo entrepreneur and you're playing the role of the CEO, COO, CFO, billing department, client services, product, marketing, like you're doing it all. And this is a year where you get to receive support. And this has been something that's been huge for me. Like when I look back at my success, especially the company that was built to 200 employees, 80 million people per month, sold to a billion dollar company for $50 million. I owe all of that to my team. Like all of it was to my team. And I wasn't even an operator every single day. I started that way, but I ended up growing the team so that I was only able to be more high level strategy, high level in my zone of genius as a visionary and meeting with my executives every single week and allowing them to be in their zones of genius. And so this is a year where you get to really be in your zone of genius and you get to have support. And so how are we going to make sure that you are clear and get clarity around your zone of genius? I want you to make a list of all the things that you are doing on a day-to-day basis. So this week, I want you to get a piece of paper or in your journal and just start writing out all of the things that you've been doing every day and start really just auditing yourself and really commit to doing this because this one practice that I give you will save you a minimum of like 10, 20 hours a week. It will save you so much time. It'll create so much more happiness in your life, so much more fulfillment, and it'll help you to be more effective in execution, right? And just being able to get results that are going to change your financial freedom. That's going to change your lifestyle freedom. And so take the time to do this. It's important. All right. So make a list of all the things that you are doing. And then I want you to get clear. Are these $10 an hour tasks, $100 an hour tasks, or $1,000 an hour tasks? And so what you want to do is when you make this list, you want to get clear on what are the things that are in one of these three categories to make it simple. All right. Do, delegate, delete. Do, delegate, delete. All right. And so you're going to put all of the, now this list that you created and the do column is what you are going to actually do. These are the things that nobody can do better than you. This is the thing that in the do column, you love doing you. It brings you joy. It's literally what comes natural. It's just like, you're great at it. You you're great at it. You love it. You enjoy it. And so you're going to put those things in that column. Then you have the delegate column. These are all the things that ultimately don't really match up to where you're at this year and how much you deserve to be paid. And so these are all the little tasks that make you tired, that drain you. You want to look at this from a perspective of drain versus fuel. And the do column, the things that fuel you. In the delegate column, these are the things that drain you, that you're ready to start allowing support in to pass the ball to them. All right. So that's the delegate column, whether or not you have the team to do that yet, just get clear on what those tasks are. So that way you can figure out who you need on your team to start to delegate those things to. Because there's so many people in the world that their zone of genius are the things you do not want to be doing. So go and actually get clear on what those things are. So you can call in the support for the people that love doing that shit. And are looking for ways to make money doing what their zone of genius is. So get clear on that. So that's the delegate column. And then last, delete. There's probably a ton of shit 
that you were doing last year that you just plain and simple shouldn't be doing in your business, in your life. These are the things that you just got to get clear on. Like it's time to cut that toxic shit out. It's time to cut out the shit that actually is not serving you and get clear out this year on the things that you need to remove. You need to let go of, you need to shed. What are those things? You know, just actually creating space and deleting the things that you realize, like it's creating chaos. It's creating you to be sporadic energy everywhere. It's draining you. It's it's not aligned to the vision. It's not aligned to the values. So boom, delete it. And it's going to feel so good because once you delete and get rid and close those tabs that you've opened and kept open on your damn computer for the last year, it's going to create so much space. And in that space, it's going to get filled with purposeful priorities that are going to align to your goals. And it's going to feel so good when you create that space, because that means the right people are going to fill up that space that are meant to support you, the right opportunities. And you're just going to notice like all of a sudden you're manifesting like true alignment. And it's, that's going to create so much happiness in your life and fulfillment and flow and ease and grace and execution. Again, just like get seeing results. All right. So the third thing in allowing you to get more focused to execute on your goals this year is boundaries boundaries. This is a thing that I've had to learn. I'm still learning this. The truth that it matters is that like this week, I'm like, wow, I learned so much from last week because I have recently broken boundaries. And so like when I think about boundaries, let's first talk about boundaries and then I'll, I'll give you my experience and like what's most important in being able to see these boundaries really support you. And it's simply like really getting clear on what are the things that are non-negotiables in your life that are going to support you in actually effectively managing that time and energy in your life. And so, for instance, an example of that is like, when are you going to take calls? And like really saying to yourself, I'm not going to be taking calls and meetings every day this week. That drains me. So like, I'm going to take calls on this day. Or maybe it's like, for me also, it's like, I'm going to stop working at this time. Like I want to be present with Ashley. I want to be present with my family. And so I'm going to stop working at 6 PM and get ready for dinner. I'm going to finish my day. I'm going to write out all the things I executed on. What am I proud of? What did I learn today that set me up to win for tomorrow? What do I got to still accomplish for tomorrow? Close the computer, close out, and then go and get present with my family. That's a boundary. You know, I don't take calls or meetings on weekends. Creating the boundaries that are going to allow you to the space to focus on your well-being. Like it's a non-negotiable to my team that like I no work from 11 to 1 because that's when I go and meet with my strength trainer and I work on my body and my health and my chiropractor and all those things. And so just getting clear as what are the non-negotiables that are going to support your health, that are going to support your commitment to being present with your family and just with your inner well-being, when you're going to be meditating, when you're going to be setting up yourself to go within and just connect with spirit. So these are the things that I'm thinking about. Also, just like connection time is important to me. Like when am I going to have a boundary to make sure that like when I'm creating space to connect with my friends, I've actually created some structure. Like I really want to have better friendship this year. And so I noticed that like leaving it up in the air doesn't work. And so I've created a, like now doing quarterly calls with certain friends that are just like, like me, high performers out there changing the world, impacting the world building their family, creating wealth legacy. So it's like once a quarter, we have a deep dive. And then in between that quarterly call, we check in on each other, just send voice notes and think of each other and just check in and check in. But like creating a very specific time frame on when we're going to drop in deeply. And so just like thinking about when you want to create space to connect with the people that you love and that are important to you. And so this is something that I'm still working through as well. And you know, it takes commitment to honor your boundaries. And the thing that I realized to honor the boundaries in your life, that basically you're not allowing anything to penetrate that time. It's like, this is the time that I've committed. And so I have a boundary where like, I'm not taking calls. I'm not taking meetings. I'm not allowing anything in because this is the time I'm committed to writing my book. This is the time I'm committed to being with my family. This is the time I'm committed to connecting with my friends. This is the time that I'm committed to focusing on my health. Like, Boom. Like these are the boundaries. And I just like, and then what, what helps is one actually 
presenting them to your team and to the people in your life, personal and business. Like, hey, guys, these are my boundaries because now others will be like, oh, okay, got it. And so they are understanding, they are clear. Don't just keep them to yourself, put them out into the world or put them out into your team. That's one. Two, it's just going into the deeper level of integrity. And so what I've learned in order for you to honor those boundaries, you have to have a high level of integrity with yourself. And so integrity is one of my core values. And so at the end of the day, how can I be in integrity with other people in my life? People I coach, people I mentor, business partners with, like, how can I be in integrity with my audience, with the world, if I can't even be in integrity with myself, with the boundaries that I've put in place to literally fill my cup up and so that I can be present and focused on that priority at that time and not allow anything to waver that. And so really thinking about the integrity of the boundaries and the integrity with your word, once you declare it to your team, then you get to honor your word. So one of the things that my coach talked about is like writing this down and keeping this in front of me, just like my values, like in my office. And it's where is my word and when is it? Where is my word and when is it? Because your word is your law. And so making sure that you're clear as to where you're giving your word to things and then when actually is it? That's interesting. It's kind of a play on words. But it's, it's something to make you make sure that you're thinking about where are you giving your word? Because if you're anything like me, like I actually have broken integrity a lot of times with my word simply because like it's not my intention, but I'm a quick start. And so like I'll just get excited about something and I'll just be like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. And let's just, yeah, let's go. Let's go tonight. Let's go to the game. And then afterwards, I'll be like, oh, shit, like I committed to like that this day being a date night or or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like. And so like my heart is in the right place, but then it's like, boom, I start to break that integrity. And so what I realized is like getting clear as that before I give my word to anything, I really get to double check, like kind of similar to learning to say, no, is this aligned to my values that I check my calendar, that I check, check up maybe my assistant is even as well. Is this aligned? You know, and so where is my word and when is it? And so just slowing myself down before I give my word. And then just again, like where I gave my word around my boundaries. And now that I've gotten clear on when the, those boundaries are, what days and how I'm putting up those boundaries on a day to day basis for those specific priorities, just honoring it, like really honoring that and just watch, watch how you break those boundaries. And when you do, you're really breaking your word to yourself. You'll notice it's on the small details. The micro is what matters. And the, you heard the saying, like the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. And so the more that you can honor the integrity with yourself, you'll notice your integrity go up with everyone else, your team, like everyone. And that to me is like when you become a person of integrity, high integrity, you are super trustworthy. People can rely on you. And when I think about a leader, that's what matters most. People want to follow someone that they can rely on, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. They can make mistakes, but can they rely on you? Are you going to show up when you say you're going to show up? Are you going to honor, like honor your word when you give your word? And so it starts with you. And so I really ask for you guys to be committed to the big commitment of the integrity within yourself and those boundaries. And then you can even go a step further and create what's called promised consequences. I did this with my client where like one of his goals was like to start making sure that he has a boundary where he reads to his son every night. So he stops taking business meetings, stops like trying to just put out fires and just being available to all these different things that pop up with his business. And he wasn't reading to his son. And so I said, you're committed. He recommitted to reading to his son every night, right? So 8 p.m. reading to his son every night. And if he doesn't, he had a promised consequence of donating $5,000 to a charity of my choice, which he did. He broke. He honored his word of breaking it. And he gave $5,000 to my man, Johnny Strong, who's fighting cancer, a young boy. Um, and so um, we get to create what those promised consequences look like. It's supposed to make you a little uncomfortable, right? So that you don't want to break your word. And so $5,000 made him a little uncomfortable, even though I still went to a good cause. And so thinking about, you can even put promised consequences to honor when you break your word or you break the integrity of your boundaries. What is that promised consequence that you have to do? And so sometimes it could be like actually removing something. So like, let's say you drink coffee every morning. It could be like, if you break the boundary of not honoring something that you committed to, you don't drink coffee for a week. And so you remove that from your life. 
or you can't use social media for a week, or you can't watch Netflix for a week or whatever. Take removing something that's going to make you feel uncomfortable because it's like something that you really enjoy. So like, that's something that you can do as well. So like really honoring the integrity of your boundaries. And I just want to end with this guys, that you guys are worthy of support. You're worthy of receiving support in your life and truly just being focused on what is the most valuable place to put your time and energy, being in your zone of genius. And so with receiving that support, I want you to understand that in order to receive support, you got to have faith and you got to have trust. And so that means you, get a tr- you have to start to trust yourself. You have to start to trust people. And that means having faith and faith is like an an even higher level of trust, like an unwavering high level of trust and spirit. And I used to believe that's like trust is earned, you know, not given. And my coach helped me reframe that, you know, you can grant trust and then just observe people. And then based on their actions, you can then remove them, but really granting and learning that like you get to have team both a personal team and a business team. Like my team now is going to a whole nother level. When I think about the expansion that I'm committed to for my vision this year, I realized that, like I said, in the beginning of this podcast, like it it all comes down to team. And so in order for this to work, I have to trust my team. I have to have faith in my team. I have to empower my team and I have to be willing to receive support. And in order to receive support, it means I got to be able to let go of some control. And so that is a practice that I want you to think about allowing your yourself to almost trust fall, maybe do a trust fall with someone in your life and just allow them to catch you and know that you are supported by God, by spirit. And then, you know, God is bringing so many dope resources into your life. When you create the space, when you start to delete the things and get clear on what you want to delegate and clear on what you get to do, and you're clear on your values, clear on your vision, clear on how you're going to manage your time effectively with your calendar. Like, God will bring in the right people and resources to support you in achieving and manifesting those goals, period. As long as you create that plan and you're clear as who you get to be in the plan and you start embodying those values and being that leader, I'm telling you right now, you will have the the right people around you that you can trust and that you know, will will support you. So know that you're worthy of that. And so I hope this podcast was valuable. All I ask is you guys subscribe, share it to your stories, tag me, share it with your friends. It means the world to me. Thank you for being on this journey with me. The ne- I, I'm one of the next podcasts. I want to be diving into wealth, le- legacy wealth. It's something that I'm really focused on this year. So I'm stoked about that. Um, let me know if this podcast was dope and valuable. Subscribe and go up level your focus and go execute on those goals and then that vision that you have for this year. Play a big game because you're here to play that big game. And so walk in wisdom, be the leader. It's your host, Gerard Adams, Leaders Create Leaders. We out. Peace. Yo, tribe, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to untangle more wisdom and gain clarity so that you can focus in on leading your movement. If you feel a connection to this audio experience, share it with your friends and please leave us a review. If you share your review and tag Leaders Create Leaders on IG, you'll enter into our weekly giveaway. Always remember, leaders create leaders.